So let me then start off with a little bit of background on autoimmune disease and why we are suddenly so fascinated with this in neurology. Um, so if you think of the immune system, if you think very simplistically of the immune system, what we try to do, what the immune system tries to do is recognize self from foreign. So anytime it, it encounters any particle in the bloodstream, it tries to see, is this myself or is this some foreign particle that I need to attack, like a virus or a bacteria? Um, when the system is working well, when the immune system is healthy, it recognizes a particle as foreign creates an antibody to it that binds to it. And then when the body sees this bound um, antigen antibody complex, it destroys it. Nice and easy way for you to um, target any infections that, are, that have invaded your body. The problem is when your immune system goes a little bit awry and it starts targeting self as foreign. So in autoimmune disorders, the immune system, for whatever reason, starts recognizing parts of the body, organs, proteins within the body as foreign, and creates antibodies to it. And then those are targeted for destruction. In the case of myasthenia gravis, what's happening is these antibodies are targeting proteins that are found on muscle surface. And um, these receptor proteins actually help communication between the nerve and the muscle. So now when you have these autoantibodies, which are these self-proteins that are now um, bound to these receptors, communication doesn't happen. So when the nerve cannot communicate to the muscle, the muscle doesn't function as well as it should. So in myasthenia gravis, what happens is um, patients have fatigable muscles. Um, they get tired very easily with very little effort. Um, their muscle can, weakness can affect several different muscles throughout the body. So it can affect the eye muscles causing um, drooping lids, double vision, which impacts your ability to drive, to work really, um, or to go to school uh, for that matter. It can affect your limbs, so hand movements, walking becomes difficult. And more seriously, it can affect the muscles that control swallowing, breathing, and that's when hospitalization becomes necessary. So it's one of those diseases. We thought we knew a lot about it. We knew that it was an immune disease and we knew um, well, you just give immune suppressants. You just give these broad-acting steroids and uh, chemotherapy kind of immunosuppressants, and that'll help things. And what we found is that it helps, but with an asterisk. So steroids and immunosuppressants are broad-acting. And when you start giving steroids and immunosuppressants, one, you deal with the long-term side effects and consequences of these drugs, um, and they're not benign. And the second more the more concerning feature is for patients, many of these take a long time of action. Um, so with steroids, it can be months before you know that you're going to see a treatment effect. But some of these immunosuppressants, these chemotherapy immunosuppressants, it can be up to a year, sometimes even longer, before you know that the drugs are working. So from the patient's perspective, these are not very ideal solutions. So what changed was we now learned a lot more about the ways that your body maintains circulating levels of antibodies. So there, there's these receptors called neonatal FC receptors that's present throughout the body in endothelial cells, in many cells throughout the body. And what it does is it allows our body to recycle levels of immunoglobulins. So it takes circulating immunoglobulins, it sucks it in, it binds to this receptor, and by staying bound, it protects it from being degraded by the body's natural uh, lysozymes and then it releases it back into circulation. So you have this constant recycling, which is very energy efficient for the body. It means that the body doesn't have to produce new immunoglobulins so often, it can rely on this recycling. So what um, molecules like nifocalumab does is it blocks the FCRN receptor. So now these immunoglobulins have no place to bind. When it gets sucked in, it gets destroyed which means that autoantibodies, these autoantibodies that are interfering with the signaling from the nerve to the muscle are getting destroyed. What's nice is that it's only focusing on one aspect, the recycling aspect. It's not affecting, it's not a broad immunosuppressant, so it's not affecting production of immunoglobulins, which means that you still have your immune system in place to fight off the things that you wanted to fight off, fight off infections, fight off viruses and bacteria but you have reduced the autoantibody titers enough 
that you can potentially make a change in the disease manifestations. And we saw a very nice proof of mechanism with our phase two trial with myasthenia, where when patients were given nipocalumab in escalating doses, you saw a really nice dose responsiveness. One, you saw a rapid response. So within one to two weeks of starting the drug, you started seeing um, disease markers going down. The immunoglobulins levels came down as well as um, activities of daily living improved on the drug. So again, huge improvement from standard of care where you're waiting months to a year to know if it's taking effect. Second, we saw that there was durable course of action. So what we're seeing and what we're hoping to now show in our phase three trial is that not only do you see this rapid deep onset of uh, improvement in your autoantibody titers, but you can sustain it for up to six months, which is the longest um, interval that any FCR molecule has been tried. So um, nipocalumab has, I think, those key differentiators from other molecules and other drugs that are being tested in MG. CIDP is very similar in that in CIDP, um, we believe that there are autoantibodies that are, again, attacking the nerve and, and um, affecting the signaling that's happening down the nerve. And when the nerve gets affected and the myelin sheet that protects the nerve gets destroyed, um, the nerve ends up like a leaky straw. The signals are just leaking out. So by reducing the number of autoantibodies and promoting healing of the nerve, you could potentially return the nerve to signaling as normal.